I have a weird relationship with Australia. Having only visited it twice in the first 18 years of my life, it's actually become my home for the last six years. But you see, I was born and bred in the city of Dubai. So you can imagine the culture shock I kind of had moving to Australia. And as much as I love Australia from the bottom of my heart, I could just not fit in with the culture there. It's actually one of the main reasons why I'm in Dubai right now. So look, if you're looking to move to Australia one day, this will be a very good video for you to understand the nuances of Australian culture. And if you're there and you feel like you're not fitting in right now, maybe you resonate with this video. But for now, I'd like to welcome you to the world of Karalius and let's get into the reasons why I didn't fit with the Australian culture. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Karalius. Every weekend after my mother from Bhutan, I'm singing a song from every country. What is it now? We are here in this... Number one, ambition is a niche. So having lived in Dubai all my life, I mean, look at Dubai in 2003, which is when my first memory of the city came about, and look at it now in 2023. You'll understand when I say that ambition runs through every single being in this city, and I'd even argue like the flies and the mosquitoes are all ambitious themselves. Because right now it is 50 degrees outside, the humidity is off the charts. But I tell you, these people be hustling. Now in Australia, this is definitely not the case. So I don't say this as a bad thing, but ambition is actually a niche there, and you'll only find a small subset of people that truly think like, okay, I have ambitions to be the number one across you know different industries or I just want to do the best to my actual abilities and actually break through. I feel like a lot of people in Australia like to live a simple life. In my experience Australians are more against the Americanization of the work culture and they don't you'll not find Australians trying to squeeze every little droplet of juice just so they can be on the hamster wheel and keep running and running and running until they can actually be the most successful guy in the world and steal as much money as they can. Now, Australians aren't really like that. A good day for an Australian is having a nice day at work, getting home in time to see the kids, having a beer, having a cigarette, or on the other side, having a glass of wine, or maybe having a joint, whatever it is, Aussies know how to chill. And that's why I actually envy them. You see, ambition is great, but it's also like a double-edged sword. Ambition can drive you crazy. And so for me, if Australians are happy within their own lives, being able to just be chill and do what they need to do, make the money that they need to make and have good times with their families, friends and themselves, then I applaud them. But that's the thing, at like the age of 23, I find it kind of hard to spend all my time chilling. I feel like there's so much energy for me to give and I might as well be working as much as I possibly can, obviously doing the thing I love so that it's not essentially just work. But like it's very normal to find me in a coffee shop at 11 p.m. drinking a Spanish latte and expecting hundreds of people to be around me. At that time in Australia, people are either sleeping or clubbing. I need that crazy crazy sort of unpredictable lifestyle where one day I sleep at 7 p.m. and one day I sleep at 7 a.m. and the next day I sleep at 12 a.m. and then I sleep at the 4 p.m. Like I need that unpredictability that pushes me towards, you know, like my ambition. So does this mean that if you're an ambitious person, you won't succeed in Australia? Not necessarily, but there are definitely some limitations to it, which I'll talk about in my next point. Number two, Australia is international but it's not really international. It's not international enough. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I am an international multilingual content creator with more than a million followers from 175 plus different countries. So I'm sort of like this global type of guy. Now in Australia, there's over 270 different ethnic groups, which is great and very diverse. But the thing is, the population is about 26 million. So while you do have all these different ethnic groups, let's say you wanted to find a Puerto Rican person or a Gambian person in Australia, you will find them, I'm 100% sure, but there's probably like 150 of them, 250, you know, and that's a very small subset of people. So in reality, for someone like me who has a huge international audience, 175 people that represent, let's say the 10 million people from Puerto Rico, that's not enough. Like just to put into perspective, I told you I have more than 1 million followers and um, in Australia, they don't give a shit about that. Like they genuinely don't. And one of the reasons of course, is that less than 100,000 of my followers are from Australia and if you have nothing to do with the Australian market, people don't care, right? Like in Dubai, for example, my international audience benefits me. In the US, international audience benefits you. In London, definitely benefits you because a lot of people are traveling there. A lot of people go in and out. A lot of people know people who are there and there is so much interchange between the people. But in Australia, that rate of change is much less. I would even say that over recent years, more people are kind of leaving Australia, but don't quote me on that, but like, because it's so hard to get to Australia, they don't really have a demand for like an international outlook. So now take that into account with bad time zones, right? It's too expensive to get here. It's too far to get here. There's no other bordering countries. If you are an ambitious person with an international outlook, I'm not saying you cannot succeed in Australia, but it definitely has its limitations and it definitely becomes so much harder for you. Now, number three hits hard for me because 
yeah, this is, this is maybe the biggest reason that made me leave Australia and it is that they don't respect what you do outside of Australia. Now, let me put into perspective. A guy started working at the age of 13 writing blogs. He took his own initiative. And then at the age of 14, he co-founded his first business. Then at the age of 15, he created a following of 50,000 people in a language that he had just learned that year. And by the age of 16, they were working with the biggest sporting competitions on the continent. At the age of 17, they became the first person to be invited twice in a row to speak on national television in the Middle East. And by the age of 18, places like The Guardian were asking for this person's insight. After all of this, the person graduates from school as one of the top 15 students from the grade. And as they go to a new country, they build a following of 200,000 in another language that they had just learned. He proceeds to learn yet another language, build more of a social media audience, reaching it up to 1 million, and even building digital operating systems for small businesses, all while traveling back and forth between Australia and the Middle East to work at some of the biggest competitions in the world, like the FIFA World Cup and the Dakar Rally. That's me. And to add to that, also graduated from the 17th best university in the world and the first university in Melbourne, or in Australia, sorry, the University of Melbourne. Now, in six years that I've been in Australia, how many jobs do you think I've been offered? Mind you, I've applied to over a thousand jobs in these six years. I've been offered less jobs than I had years in Australia. Five jobs. And most of those jobs were, were hiring 90 people for a typical call center role. And as you look in my bio, I'm a person who has creative energy. I don't wanna be sitting down doing the same repetitive task every single day. I believe I have creative energy and I want to be giving that to the world. And yet I was unable to find a place to welcome me in Australia and they said it by their own mouths that my international experience is not really looked for here. And I even ended up speaking to recruiters and recruiters verified that. And even one managed to tell me that because you don't have experience in Australia, your pay grade goes from between 80,000 to 100,000 Australian dollars a year to 60,000 to 80,000 Australian dollars a year. Basically saying you have to work in a junior content creator role. Now, to put into perspective, at the age of 22, after all of this stuff that I told you that I've done, to be told that I need to do a junior content creator role, when I've worked at international competitions like the World Cup, what do you expect me to think? I am completely proud of the work that I've done over the last 10 years. Like, I think I've done an amazing job. I've proved that I'm, an, I'm a go-getter. i proved that I'm adaptable. I've learned three languages on my own, bro. Like, if someone dares to tell me in the comments that, you know, I've learned three languages on my own. I've built a following of more than one million people in three different languages. Like, I am anything but a one-hit wonder. I am literally a person who always does what is not expected. Like. Half the shit I told you I did was before school. So that proves that I'm a person that if you put expectations on me, I will end up hitting those expectations. Now you could say maybe you don't market yourself well enough, maybe you don't you know, put yourself out there, but if you look at the different types of CVs and videos and people that I've spoken to, there is no excuse for not to be offered one good job within my industry. Like I was offered a job as a sales consultant at a gym before I got offered a social media role in Australia. No one wanted to invest in me. No one wanted to give me a chance. Everyone said that eh, this person pips you because this person lives here in Melbourne. You know, by the way, before you ask any questions, I'm also an Australian citizen. But, I don't know. But like, you know, it's like, again, there's no visa issues. There's no payment issues. It's not like I've asked them for $200,000 a year. There's literally, like, even though when he told me like, oh, you know, you need to take $60,000 a year, I was like, I mean, yeah, if I have to, but come on. Like the fact that they didn't respect any of the experience that I had, it just, it just hurt. And it hurts because Australia is a place that if you play your cards right, you can truly be who you want to be and live in a place that allows you to thrive to the best of your abilities. Like to give you an example, you could be a dog walker from 8 to 10 a.m. in Australia. And then from 10 to 1 p.m. you could be a content creator. Then after lunch you could go become an enthusiast of the Royal Botanical Gardens and then from 6 to 11 p.m. you have a shift at a restaurant and then even from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. you could have a shift at a bar. And then the next day, because you want, you could work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Starbucks editing your videos because you feel like it. Genuinely, Australia can give you that chance to work in the ideal way that you want to. But when it comes to the job industry, you have to be someone you're not. It even came to the point where recruiters, recruiters were telling me to fake my CV. Why? Why do I need to fake my CV? I know you say, oh yeah, that's the situation that you need to, but why I'm talking about from a philosophical perspective, not from a job perspective. Why as human beings do we have to fake who we are to get things? Doesn't that like 
And now we're going off track a little bit. Doesn't that scare you? Human beings, as an essence, we have to be something we're not to get something we sometimes don't want just because we need it. Like, I swear to you, I tried to bring all of my international ideas and Australianize them. I tried my best, but no one would really care. No one would really bat an eye. As I told you, you know, hundreds of millions of views on my social media. No one in Australia looked at that and was like, yeah, that's an effort. I mean, people would say it, but I don't really care about words because I'm here to work, I'm here to collaborate, I'm here to make things better for you, make things better for myself. But yeah, look, every city and every country in the world has its good and bad. I'm saying this from a certain perspective of a certain person, a certain type of being. You may look at these reasons that I had and say, yeah, actually, that's actually very suitable for me. And, and that is definitely suitable for you. But from my perspective, I've looked at the upside and I've looked at the downside, and currently the downside really outweighs the upside of being able to be who I want to be. And that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot because I really value being able to be who I want to be freely. I really, truly value that. But the downside at this phase of my life is so huge that I can't, I, I cannot, I can't fit in with the Australian culture. But anyways, I hope you found this video valuable. Whether you've resonated with it or not, whether you agree with it or not, I'd like to hear your opinion, I'd like to hear your experience, and I'd like to connect with you. So welcome to the world of Karalius, and we'll see you tomorrow for um, another random topic that I may be opening up.